Hello, today we are going to discuss how to use a dodong shark. First, some recap and terminology. So, three nucleotide sequences of mRNA are known as codons. Three nucleotide sequences that complement mRNA codons are known as anticodons, and that is found in tRNA. There are codon sequences for starting protein synthesis as well as for stopping protein synthesis. Three nucleotides are needed to code for one amino acid. There are 20 different kinds of amino acids, and then different combinations, sequences, and formations of amino acids make different proteins with different functions. Codon charts are used to determine what amino acids will be formed from specific codon sequences. So, above are two different kinds of codon charts. The left is a rectangular shaped codon chart, while the right is a circular shaped codon chart. Both uh, will tell you the exact same information, but no matter what kind of codon chart you're using, you always need to use the mRNA strand in a codon chart to determine the amino acids. Okay? That is just the strand that you need to use to correctly get the right amino acid. Okay? If you try using tRNA, you're going to get the completely wrong protein. And if you use DNA, that's also going to be completely wrong, especially if you are using uh, DNA that has like codon sequences that would have uh, thymine or T in it, because on these codon charts there is no T. Instead, there is U for your cell. Right. So again, always use mRNA for codon charts. Now I'm going to get into some practice examples um, as to how to use each of these charts, and I'm going to start with the circuit chart. Okay. So number one. Uh, the three nitrogen bases of the nucleotides happen to be all your cell. U, U, U. Okay? So how we use this codon chart to figure out what the amino acid will be is we start in the very middle of the circle with that first U. Okay? U is our first letter. Then we go to the second ring for our second letter, the ring next to it, right outside. Okay? And then lastly, the third letter is the outermost ring of letters right there, or nitrogen bases, and that is also a U. So there we have, going from the middle to the outside, U, U, U. And there we can see that codes for the amino acid phenyl alanine. Okay, so when you're using the cylindrical uh, codon chart, you are always going to start with your first letter in the middle, and then gradually work your way to the outside. Uh, codons 2, 3, 4, and 5, I'll let you pause and look at those on your own and just, you know, follow the pathway again from the middle to the outside and see how to get those. But I will do another example of uh, UCA. Okay. So, UCA, we again start with U in the very middle because that is our first letter. Okay. Then our second letter is C or cytosine. So we move to the outside. And our third letter is A, which is the next outermost ring. And we can see that is adenine. And then we get serine right there as our amino acid. Now the thing with uh, amino acids is you can have multiple codes code for the same amino acid. So as we can see here, no matter what the third uh, nitrogen base of our codon is, so whether it's U, C, A, or G, doesn't matter, all of those are going to code for serine. Okay? Um, so that's just something to look at when you're looking at your codon charts. And then again, practice 7, 8, 9, 10 on your own, just tracing that pathway again. All right, uh, the rectangular codon chart now. This is the one that I prefer to use. Um, we're going to look at CAU for histidine, okay? So how this works is it's like a grid system. So you start 
with uh, your first letter just being you pick what row that you were looking at. So our first letter is C, so you're going to be looking exclusively in row C for whatever our amino acid. Okay. Then our second letter is A, so looking at top now, that is going to be the row that we find our amino acid in. So now we are only looking in the box where this where the C row and the A column uh, intersect with one another. Okay? And then all we do is in that little box, the four different codons, we look for the last letter. So we know first letter C, second letter A, and then all we have to do is find CAU, which is right there, and that codes for histidine. Okay? So again, uh, try practicing uh, this kind of grid system. It's a lot like the game Battleship 2 uh, when you're calling out uh, shots. So again, practice 12, 13, 14, and 15 on your own uh, following that grid system. And again, I'll do a second example with uh, 16 GAA. So the first letter G, that means we're going to look exclusively in row G. Our second letter is A, so again we are looking in column A exclusively. So then we look in the cross box of where G and A intersect, and we look for our third letter, which is also A, so for GAA, and that quotes for the glutamic acid, which is the name of the amino acid for this protein that's being coded. Okay? And then again, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Uh, you can do this same process on your own. Uh, it doesn't really matter uh, whether you use the circular chart or the rectangular chart. Um, they will both get you uh, the same amino acid that you're looking for. Just again, make sure you're always using the mRNA code for your code on chart. Thank you for watching. Please share and subscribe. And remember to spread.